Desmond Ritter made a name for himself towards the end of the college football season and during the NFL combine. I had him ranked fourth out of my top five rookie quarterbacks. Going into the draft, I had him going late first, early second round. However, it didn't go well for most of the rookie quarterbacks. Obviously, we know Kenny Pickett was taken in the first round, so he received the draft capital to be drafted in the first round of your dynasty leagues. However, Desmond Ritter was the second quarterback off the board. However, he was drafted in the third round by the Atlanta Falcons with pick 74. So the big question is, is Desmond Ritter the Atlanta Falcons QB1? And we're going to talk about it today. Let's get right into it. Welcome to the Blown Coverage Fantasy Football Podcast with Waver Wire Queen. Make sure you subscribe to the channel if you play fantasy football and you are trying to stay ahead of your competition and prepare for the upcoming season, or if you are trying to learn how to play fantasy football, we have a lot of great content to help you learn and improve your game in fantasy football. So Desmond Ritter, again, was my fourth ranked quarterback. I'll tell you this, one of the uh, traits that he has is he is a leader of men. He is a leader, and you're seeing that early on at um, the Falcons' mini uh, rookie camp. You're seeing it. He's standing out. He's doing all the right things. The biggest reason why Desmond Ritter has a chance to be the QB1 for the Falcons is because there's not a lot of competition at the quarterback position. Obviously, the main hurdle is Marcus Mariota. They signed Mariota during free agency. So that is his competition. Mariota has a, a ton of experience and he's a mobile quarterback and he knows Smith's offensive system. So that gives him the advantage. But however, we've known that Mariota hasn't been great as a starter statistically. And so that was a slight concern for most um, people who were considering drafting Drake London. And then if you have Kyle Pitts, you're like, ooh. But once the Falcons drafted Desmond Ritter, it was like, okay, now that is a great reason to draft Drake London early like you were planning on doing and still gives you the confidence that, hey, Drake London should perform well as a rookie and Kyle Pitts should improve on a tremendous rookie season. Desmond Ritter, he has all of the tools. He's he's mobile like Mariota. He's very athletic, so there's no issues there. And again, I envision him at some point during the season getting an opportunity to play because, again, they are in rebuild mode. And at some point, they're going to want to see what he can do in a real live NFL game against the best players in the NFL. So that is another reason why I do feel he'll get the opportunity. And I know most people are like, well, most quarterbacks who were drafted in the third round don't pan out. And then, you know, you have the Russell Wilson comparison, but how many Russell Wilsons are out there? Not many. So the probability of Desmond Ritter being successful is slightly low but again, he has the tools and the traits to be, if nothing else, he can be a solid starting quarterback or a solid backup quarterback. But considering the situation with the Falcons, I don't see any reason why he's not going to get the opportunity this season to showcase his talent because I believe they're going to want to know this year what they have in Ritter because, you know, the 2023 draft is the draft that is supposed to have all of the talented quarterbacks, the best quarterbacks. A lot of people were looking past this draft, quarterback-wise, to get to the 2023 draft. But again, I do believe at least two of these guys out of those quarterbacks in this 2022 class is going to be solid starters. 
that's just what it's going to be. So let's talk a little bit about uh, Desmond Ritter's um, career stats in college. You know, he played for Cincinnati. He's got the height, 6'3", and he's 2'11". Um, he ran a 4.52 40 time, which isn't bad for a quarterback. That's actually solid. And again, he's he's mobile, which I really like. And that is good for um, fantasy purposes because say he does turn into a solid quarterback, he's mobile. So he's going to get you points in the Russian game. And he's also obviously a quarterback. So he's going to get you points in the, in the passing game. So again, he has the tools to be their QB1, if nothing else, at some point this season. And again, the rebuild and also the lack of stability at the quarterback position, okay? And again, this young man is a leader of men. That is something you have to have as well because if those other players don't believe in you, they ain't playing for you or they're not paying you no attention, okay? So... I believe he he has that number one trait as a quarterback because not all quarterbacks are are leaders. We know we know that from some quarterbacks uh, previously. So uh, career wise, for uh, Cincinnati, one thousand three hundred and four attempts, eight hundred and ten completions, sixty two point one percent completion rating. 10,239 passing yards, he averaged 7.9 yards per attempt, 87 touchdowns, 28 interceptions. That is a beautiful ratio, okay? I'm sorry, 87 to 28 is a very good ratio, and his rating was 145.8. So he had an impressive college career, but again, it's going to be an uphill battle because of the lack of the draft capital, which means not a lot of NFL execs believed in him enough to draft him in the first two rounds. And then also you got to think there were several teams that needed quarterbacks and they were passing up on all of these guys with the exception of Kenny Pickett. They were just passing, passing them up. This is a perfect situation because he will again this year get the opportunity to play. And if he plays well, he will secure that starting job. And again, when you have truly only um, Mariota, they have uh, Felipe, but I do believe he's going to surpass Felipe on that depth chart for the quarterback position. And he's going to compete with Marcus Mariota. He's in there being respectful and just trying to absorb and learn, which most of these rookies should be doing. But he's hungry to be the starter, which is why I do believe at some point this year he's going to see some action on the field because of all of the factors that's going on with the Falcons, with the fact that they're in a rebuild. They're not going to be winning many games. Also, the stability the, or lack thereof at the quarterback position and the fact that they are going to want to see what they have in this young man before the 2023 draft so is desmond ritter a qb1 he has the potential he has the tools and the potential to be a qb1 and he's going to get the opportunity to prove that he can be a qb1 so if you are considering drafting desmond ritter draft him second or third round first round it's a no the only rookie quarterback that should be going in the first round is kenny pickett but desmond ritter to me, at this point, should be the second quarterback off the board and then Malik Willis, or if you want to vice versa, Willis, Ritter, those two guys, and then um, Corral and Howe later in the draft. But again, if you're in a super flex dynasty league, then Ritter has the potential and the tools. And again, you got to understand the dynasty league factor. You don't have to draft Ritter to start immediately. You can draft him, put him in your taxi squad, and see what happens this season. I do believe he's going to be that other rookie quarterback I feel will end up starting and surprising a lot of people because he has the tools. He has the traits, okay? And the talent is there. And the talent is there for most of these guys. You just got to want it, and you just got to be able to go out there and execute 
And when you put the time in, it pays off. And I do believe it's going to with uh, Desmond Ritter. Leave some comments and let me know your thoughts of Desmond Ritter being a QB1 for the Atlanta Falcons. And also make sure you subscribe to the channel. If you play fantasy football and you're trying to prepare for the upcoming season and get a competitive advantage, over your competition because the goal is to win and that's what we're trying to do over here and that's what we want you to do win your leagues we want you to win all your leagues and also make sure you hit that like button and follow for more peace Thanks for listening to the Blown Coverage Fantasy Football Podcast. Be sure to subscribe to our YouTube channel at Blown Coverage Fantasy Football Podcast.